Hello everyone. In the last video we made a burst effect. Today we are going to make this burst effect in order of direction. Just like what we see in the level, it will burst from bottom to top. Okay, we have the burst effect made in the last video, which can simulate grenades or firecrackers. Now we need to make some changes to it so that it can burst in order of direction. So first in Niagara we only need the source emitter, because these emitters are spawned by receive the particle position of the source emitter, so we can modify the particle position in the source emitter to achieve the effect we need. Okay, for the convenience of preview, cancel the velocity and acceleration, as well as scale mesh size. First, we need to modify particles position in the initialized particle. Use make vector to get particles position in the x, y, and z axis. Here we need to understand the most critical node for making this effect, which is return normalized exec index. It can get the normalized index number of each particle spawned by this emitter. For example, if we spawn 100 particles, the index numbers of these particles will be normalized to 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and finally 1. Then use the normalized particle index number multiplied by a value, so that these particles can be arranged in sequence. Set float to negative 500. OK, these particles will be arranged in sequence on the z-axis. With a total of 500 units, now we get the particle position we need. Then we disable update mesh orientation and preview it. In the initial mesh orientation, make these particles face the positive and negative directions of the x-axis. Of course, use the particle index number again, but this time we use the unique ID of the particle which is somewhat similar to the return normalized exec index we just used, but unique ID is not normalized, so its index number is 0, 1, 2, and finally 99. Search for ID in the particle parameters. Yes, we can see the unique ID here. Then use lerp to distinguish the two directions of the x-axis. For alpha, we use bool to compare and use mod the unique ID by 2. Because the value of the unique ID is an integer, mod will output only be 0 or 1. In other words, these particles will output 0 and 1 in turn, so that their rotation can be distinguished. If mod equal to 0, the output value is 0 0.125. If mod is equal to 1, then the output value is negative 0 0.125. OK, now we can see these particles have two different directions. Of course, we also need to modify these particles offset on the y-axis. We can directly duplicate the lerp to the y-axis in the initialized particle. The offset value should be larger, which can be set to 10 and negative 10. OK, these particle size is not uniform. Reset it to 0 0.15, 0 0.15 and 0 0.3 and set the particle's lifetime to 1. By the way, we also need to disable shape location. Yes, so we get a sequential burst effect. Now we need to make it burst from bottom to top. Still use return normalized exec index. In the initialized particle, set the particle lifetime according to the index number. The particle's lifetime at the bottom should be the shortest, so that it will burst first. Then particle's lifetime from bottom to top will gradually increase so that the burst effect in sequence will be produced. OK, here we also need to multiply float, use a parameter, then input B. We need to do a subtract, 
subtracting return normalized exec index from 1, so we can see that the particles will burst one by one. But this speed is a bit too fast. We can modify the parameter to be longer. OK, now we can see that after the lifetime is modified, the burst effect will disappear. This is because the loop duration in these emitters is only one, which means that no particles will be spawned after one second. So just modify this value to be longer, such as five. Each emitter needs to be adjusted. Now it should be work. Yes, it can run. And we also hope that these particles will be affected by forces during burst, just like impulse. So at this time we can enable gravity, but not all particles will be affected by gravity. It should be the particles at the bottom that are about to burst that will be affected. So here we need a bool multiply vector by float. In our current settings, the particle's lifetime at the bottom is of course the shortest, and the top is the longest. Use particle lifetime subtract particle age. In this way, we can make a bool. If the remaining time of the current lifetime of this particle is less than 0.2 seconds, we will let it be affected by gravity. In other words, when the particle is about to burst, it will be affected by gravity. Then we can add point force, just copy these nodes again. If it is true, the particle is affected by the force. Set a random value from 50 hundred to 10,000. If it is false, set the force to zero and we have to set the particle position in the point force to the current particle position. And the force origin is also set to the current particle position, so that the particle will have the correct force. If these positions are default, then the force will only affect the particle at a sim point, which is not suitable for our effect. Then we can also enable update mesh orientation, so that the effect will look better when the particle is affected by the force, so rotation rates still duplicate this node. If it is true, update mesh orientation. If it is false, there is no rotation of the particle. OK, let's take a look at it in the level. Yes. This will create an effect of burst in order of direction. OK, here we use this burst example to demonstrate one use of particle index, and you can also use it to other applicable effects to make it better. So that's all for this video. I hope you like it. Bye.